الحل الثاني زي ما قلت لحضراتكم هو وجود لقاح زي ما قلت لحضراتكم في حلقات سابقه ان اللقاح الاقرب الى الحقيقه والاقرب الى التنفيذ هو لقاح اوكسفورد لانه هو دلوقتي في المرحله الثالثه واعتقد انه خلال ثلاث من ثلاث لاربع اسابيع هيعلنوا نتائج يعني شبه نهائيه في هذا اللقاح وبالتالي بنسبه كبيره ان شاء الله ممكن يكون اللقاح في في متناول امتى بقى والتفاصيل دي ايه من من اهميه لقاح اوكسفورد البرلمان البريطاني استدعى ساره جيلبرت ساره جيلبرت هي العالمه البريطانيه العالمه في جامعه اوكسفورد اللي هي رئيس الفريق البحثي اللي ابتكر هذا اللقاح العالمه ساره جيلبرت عملت جلسه اجتماع مهمه جدا قدام البرلمان البريطاني عشان هم بيناقشوا مستقبلهم يمكن مستقبل البشريه كلها ممكن يتحدد في هذه الجلسه احنا اختصرنا لحضراتكم الجلسه دي لانهم سالوها كل الاسئله الشعبيه اللي احنا كمان بنسالها طب امتى اللقاح هيطلع طب نتائجه طب مناعته طب هل هو فعلا بيقي من المرض ولا لا طيب سالوها حتى حوالين فكره تحور الفيروس وقالت نفس الكلام اللي انا قلته لحضراتكم حوالين الدراستين الاخيرتين اللي هي بتقول انه الفيروس اصبح اكثر قدره على الانتشار لكنه ثابت وسالوها سؤال مهم جدا طب لو التحور الحالي اللي حدث في الفيروس هيمنع اللقاح لان اللقاح بيشتغل على الجيل الاولاني او الجيل اللي طلع من الفيروس هي اكدت بشكل قاطع في هذه الجلسه انه هذا التحور مش هياثر على اللقاح هم ست دقائق اختصرنا فيهم بالكامل او اخذنا منهم الاجزاء المهمه جدا نقدر نشوف من خلالها كيف جاوبت العالمه ساره جيلبرت في جامعه اوكسفورد على اسئله النواب في البرلمان الانجليزي في جلسه استماع هامه جدا بتخص تقريبا مستقبل البشريه كلها One way we can look at this is by doing animal studies where we vaccinate them with the same vaccine that we plan to use in humans and then expose the animals to very large amounts of the virus. Um, and so this is not so much to look at the effectiveness of the vaccine, it's to look at the safety of the vaccine in the face of a very high dose viral infection and to see if there's any chance that the vaccination prior to the exposure to the virus makes the disease worse. So we've been doing four preclinical studies uh, with three different collaborators in different parts of the world to look at this. And we had data from the first of these studies before we started our first phase one trial. So before any people were vaccinated in our clinical trials, we had evidence from a study in non-human primates, which was uh, made public on bioarchive, that there was no evidence of disease enhancement after vaccination and then exposure to the virus. Subsequently, we've had data come through from three more similar studies in two different animal species and again no evidence of disease enhancement at all so we're, we're very happy that we're, we're seeing the right sort of immune response that will give protection and not the wrong sort that might cause enhanced disease. Professor Gilbert how's, uh, how's Oxford on uh, in terms of the timeline? Well, well I hope we can um, improve on those timelines and come to your rescue Obviously, the, the thing that we have to do is show that the vaccine works. And as Kate said, we can't show that the vaccine works unless we have infections in the group that are receiving the control vaccine so that we know that people were being exposed and that the vaccine has protected them. And with the transmission dropping so much in the UK, uh, we now have trials going in both Brazil and in South Africa. So we've currently vaccinated a few hundred people in Brazil, but within weeks that should be up to 4,000. And in South Africa, we're aiming for 2,000 people. And those are both areas of high transmission at the moment. We now have 8,000 people vaccinated in the phase three trial in the UK. So that's very good going. And apart from the ability to test efficacy, if there is any increase in virus transmission, that also gives us the safety database that we need because we're looking at the vaccine in older adults as well as younger adults. Yeah. We need safety data and we need to look at the immune response in people of different ages as well. So in terms of when we get the efficacy result, I can't give you a precise answer because it just depends on what happens in these different trials that are running. Uh, we're now partnered with AstraZeneca, as I'm sure you know, and they will be starting a very large study in the US um, in, the, in, in August. They will be vaccinating and they'll be aiming for 30,000 people uh, and again in areas where there's high transmission. So we're maximizing our opportunity to determine vaccine efficacy, but we have to get that result before we can actually decide that the vaccine is, is ready to be used. In parallel with that, of course, Manufacturing is scaling up, manufacturing is increasing, um, 
every week we're getting um, improvements in the ability of more companies to manufacture the vaccine. And the aim is by um, the autumn to have a large amount of vaccine ready to use. And as soon as we have the efficacy results and can go through the emergency use licensure process, we would be able to start vaccinating. Before we started the work on this particular coronavirus vaccine, we have been working on a different coronavirus vaccine against Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. And we have vaccinated people in a clinical trial and taken their serum, which contains the neutralizing antibodies, and tested the serum to see if it would neutralize different isolates of the MERS virus that had accumulated mutations over the time. And in fact, um, we looked at the most diverse MERS viruses that we could, and we found that the neutralizing antibodies neutralized all of them. So that's, that's a different coronavirus, but it, it, MERS also mutates quite slowly. The, the mutations take a long time to accumulate, and we weren't seeing any escape from the neutralizing antibodies that we were generating by vaccination. Um, on the question of um, duration of immunity, um, as uh, Professor Bell has said, it doesn't seem to be very long lived. Naturally acquired immunity to other human coronavirus infections is, is relatively short lived. And we know that people get reinfected sometimes quite quickly, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we'll see the same thing with the vaccine because the vaccines have a different way of engaging with the immune system. And we followed people in our vaccine studies using the same type of technology to, to make vaccines for several years and we still see strong immune responses. So again, it's something we have to test and, and follow over time, we can't know until we actually have the data, but we're optimistic based on earlier studies that we will see a good duration of immunity for, for several years at least, and probably better than naturally acquired immunity.